in Chicago, vampires and humans are not on great terms, but the murder, murder makes for mm. strange bedfellows. That is the setup for Blood Games, the tenth installment in Chloe Neal's Chicago Land Vampire series. And Chloe check out the cover. returns. Update us on Merritt. Hi, Chloe. And her dangerous adventures. Hello, good morning, nice Merritt. Good morning. Very good morning, well, thank Merit. you. Merritt, good morning, Merritt. <laughs> <laughs> she, we share a lot of the same speech, so you can probably, yeah, but I can answer Merit, for her. Who was Merritt, Merritt modeled after? It wasn't you, was it? It wasn't. It was a char just a character in my head, but her voice, um, she and I speak pretty similarly. She's actually, though, very much a meat lover, and I was a vegetarian when I started writing her. I am not any longer. Right. We, were, we were eating bacon earlier, and you <laughs> said Merritt so would good. enjoy it. She would have. She would like it. It okay. smells really good in here. So good. what are readers in for, for uh, with Blood Games? Uh, we've got a couple things going on, actually. Some really big, interesting political developments. Ethan Sullivan, head of Cadigan House, has challenged Darius West, who's kind of head of the Vampire Council um, and wants his job. And then we've also got these very mysterious supernatural murders in Chicago. Mm -hmm. The cops are out of, uh, kind of out of ideas, so they've asked Merritt and company to help out. So she's in looking for the person responsible for she, these murders. She How is. bad does it get for her? How dangerous is it? Pretty bad. There's actually a lot of action, a lot of fight scenes in these, which can be a challenge to write because you kind of have to figure out. Oh, it's out. so visual. It is. You have to figure out how to how to make something interesting happen in three dimensions mm -hmm. and then translate it well, back you, to two. You're, you're a it's fighter, tricky. though. You've always been a fighter. That's how you, <laughs> it just comes naturally for you, right? I uh, clearly very yeah, big yeah. on the martial arts. Very, what? I don't know. This is my this is the extent of my martial arts. <laughs> in There's blood games, do you have to read some of the prior books to be able to, to to be caught up to be able to read blood games? I have to remind myself a little bit um, because frankly, I've I've already written Dark Debt, which is the next one. I'll start editing that this weekend, and I had to remind myself what blood games was about because. I have to kind of clear the ca the memory mm -hmm. cache mm -hmm. to start writing the next one, um, but I also have a fantastic continuity editor who helps me make sure that the books are consistent so with flow. what so happens right. in the in the prior books. For readers who aren't familiar with you and they're just hearing about you today, can they pick up Blood Games and it stands alone? I always recommend they start from the beginning. There is a mystery that's presented and solved within Blood Games, but to really get a feel for the characters, the inside jokes, kind of the you know the fun contextual elements, they'll want to start with Some Girls Bite, which is the first book. You've been extremely busy. And, and you did it as some some kind of a, a world tour, maybe not to that extent. <laughs> well, you were in France, right? You, did, I was you went in to France. A, a, a conference or a, some sort of what book signing thing there? I did. I did uh, Epinalis, <laughs> which is the largest, or Imaginalis, which is an Epinal, which is the largest science fiction and fantasy convention in France. These amazing kind of antique circus tents set up in a beautiful uh, riverside park. It was absolutely amazing, and uh, French fans were just very, very enthusiastic, which was great. Was that weird, finding French fans? It was unusual. Go to France, you got all these fans? It's always unusual when you find people who, you know, who just really are passionate about these books, because mm -hmm. that's a little bit surreal, but to know that they're passionate about it in a language that I don't even speak is fantastic, but I have really good translators. So, so that's, are that's you to France what David Hasselhoff is to Germany? <laughs> you know, right. I think actually Merit is the David Hasselhoff of vampires in Germany. She's uh, very, very popular <laughs> That's great. So the next book, and then what you said you'll start working on 12, even though I 10 will. is just out at some point. I will. But then what? What's next for the series, and what's next for you? There actually will be 13 books in the Chicagoland Vampire series, so we, we will, we've got a couple of years left on those. I don't have to cry yet, because I inevitably will. But I actually have a new series that will come out uh, next year. I'll, uh, that's the next book I will write. Um, it's called Devil's Isle. It's set in a dystopian New Orleans um, and I'm really, really excited to get started. Claire's our heroine. There's kind of a, a supernatural ghetto that all folks with magic have been forced into, and um, we get to experience uh, what that's about. Where, so. do you, where does this come from? I what is no your imagination idea. like inside? What's in your head there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I am a very curious person by nature. I love to just kind of see what's out there and mix it up, and I think when I write, I end up incorporating a lot of the things that I read mm -hmm. or hear about. What is your relationship like with your readers? As you're talking about writing fight scenes, mm -hmm. you must trust them and their ability to see what you see as you're writing. So it's got to be a somewhat intimate relationship. I think people. it really is. I think people, you know, A, they invest financially in the books, but they're also giving up a couple hours or three hours or six hours or however long it takes of their day to sit down and really just 
be in a moment with me and my characters. And that's really a very intimate relationship. And you see that the passion for the characters or if someone is not thrilled about what happens in the book, they mm -hmm. like to tell me about it. Uh -huh. So that can be a little tricky. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning of the series, did you imagine that there would be 10, no. 11, maybe 12 books in yeah. this series? I mean, you hope. I had thought that the timeline that I had in my mind would maybe take me through eight, but I really had no idea what so I was why doing. 13? So <laughs> why did you land on the, the number 13? You know, I think it's what I want to do is get Marin and her relationship with Ethan to a certain point. And I think that's the way, that's a good spot uh, to kind of get them to where they need to be. And, and and frankly, give them a little I bit just of a break. I wonder if there's any symbolism in the number. Only that I really like that it's 13. Uh -huh. I mean, it's got such supernatural connotations. I right. think it's You're a good place to end a vampire series. Well, that's my favorite keynote yeah. number, too. Oh, so nice. I'm glad to hear that. Nice. Well, good. Glad that worked out yeah. for you. <laughs> my birthday, my birthday's on the you, 13th, Mary. and so you just always go but with But you that. can't get to 13 if you can't get past one. Exactly. So that first one, I mean, exactly. that's critical oh, in how it goes. Yeah. What about movies, TV series? Where is Chatter on on that? No news yet. I, you know, Obviously, I would love for someone to do that. Have interest? Not that I'm aware of my agent I have uh, an agent and a you know an, an entire editorial team who I'm sure would be happy to entertain any offers that are out there <laughs> uh, we also own the musical rights so that's an option if anybody is interested in the Chicago Land Vampires musicals I'd be happy to talk to them about writing some of that it wouldn't surprise us based yeah. on the popularity of this series so I far but I think there's a lot of great sarcasm and make a really good TV series so uh -huh. Joss Sweden if you're looking for a new <laughs> uh, what about our viewers and if they want to pick up a copy of this book or any of the others absolutely you can visit Chloe Neal com, which is my website right there. You can get all the information about the books, a book list of the books in order. You can also see what's recently come out and what's next. Um, Barnes & Noble at Oakview actually has signed copies of, I believe, all of the books um, ready to go. So you can call Marsha at, at Barnes & Noble if you have any interest there. The covers of these books, they're kind of scandalous. Ooh. They are, and they've gotten more scandalous. If you look at them over time, <laughs> there's less, significantly less uh, clothing, skin. a little more skin. Little more skin. And my, my name on the cover has gotten a lot larger. So I guess that's a compliment that I, <laughs> my name alone. And that's one of the things novel. I've seen is I, I see the comments online mm -hmm. of people that are not talking as much about what's inside the yeah. book as they do what's on the look cover. Look at her leather. Uh -huh. A lot of leather. <laughs> A lot of a lot of cleavage. It's hard not yeah. to notice. Yes, Thanks, Chloe. International yeah. sensation, Chloe Neal. I, I like Thank that. Thank you for coming. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Thank you.